Hi, I'm Tom from Tom Miggot Photography. Over a year ago, when I published my Happy New Year 2016 video, I announced that I wanted to do a series of videos on fine art printing. Well, 2016 ended and I never got to do it for many reasons. Well, guess what? Starting now. There's a lot to say about fine art print and its process, and I'm gonna do several videos on the topic. Ho hopefully I can cover a lot of things without losing you in the details. Well, today is the introduction, and maybe we need to define what a fine art print is and what makes it so different from the common picture print that you would order at your favorite photo store or even at a supermarket nowadays, if not online. Well, maybe to explain it, we need to go back in time, nearly 40 years ago. You see, in 1985, a company called um, Iris Graphics Incorporated released a large format inkjet printer called the Iris 2044. And that printer was a game changer. Despite its price tag of $126,000, uh, it was praised by printmakers, artists, and photographers because in that particular printer enabled them finally to color accurately reproduce the artwork in high resolution. Six years later, there's a printmaker called Jack Dugain even coined the term Gicle which is a French word, um, to, dif to distinguish prints from the iris printer uh, from any other print that would come from another inkjet printer. Because you see, at the time, inkjet printers were not good at all. Um, they work okay for, uh, for offices, I would say, but when it comes to reproduce artwork, it was just not there. The colors were not there. Nothing, was, it was not high resolution either. And basically, Nowadays, you can find the word G clay, fine art print, um, pigment, uh, pigment prints, they all archival pigment prints, they all basically refer to the same thing. And that is a print that has been um, obtained f using archival inks, and the paper is an acid free paper, most of the time, a natural fiber uh, paper like cotton. And the combination of the two produces an amazing um, visual quality, but also a, an archive life of over a hundred years. Nowadays, well, we've got basically two brands, two leaders in the market, uh, Canon and Epson. Um, and the interesting thing is that but two, between two and four years ago, things have changed dramatically for inject printers, especially for pro consumers, because they have finally been made available. Uh, the price went down, basically. So not only it's possible for pro consumers to produce fine art print, but in some situation, it may actually be more economical. And at the end of the day, that's the reason why I got into it. Um, I could afford it and it was, at the end, cheaper than relying on my lab uh, that I'm still using, but for producing wedding albums and so on. So what makes a great fine art print? What are the ingredients? Well, the first ingredient of all has to be for us a great photo. And by great photo, great quality photo, I'm not referring to the subject because you see the subject really doesn't matter. Uh, it can be a landscape like I have here, but it can also be um, people, portraits. Uh, and I do quite a lot for, uh, for weddings and family uh, portraitures. So, but what I mean by quality photo, I'm talking about the fact that a print Printing your photo will reveal um, any defect that you have in your photo to start with. And in some extent, it may actually even accentuate uh, the defects. And by defect, what I'm referring to would be the lack of sharpness, um, burn highlights, uh, block shadows, chromatic aberration, uh, unwanted vignetting, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so hopefully, all the videos that I've produced since 2012 will help you achieve that great photograph. And I'll carry on producing videos uh, on how 
making photos. Uh, so that is the first ingredient. The second ingredient would have to be what we call column management. And this is not something that we have talked a lot in the past, although we, I did one episode on uh, calibrating your display, which falls into uh, column management category. But basically, column management, what it is, is that in the photographer's printing ecosystem, you'll have multiple devices and one medium. And so by devices, I'm referring to your camera and lens. I'm referring to your computer display, your printer, the ink and the paper. And you see all these devices and the medium need to communicate in full symbiosis um, in order to produce accurate result and not only accurate result but predictable results. And there are many things to follow in terms of guidance and it's a workflow at the end. And the next episode we will tackle uh, the first part of column management. So that's column management, it is very important and it is very important no matter whether you shoot in color or you do uh, monochrome photography, it applies to everyone. The third ingredient would have to be um, the printer and uh, the ink. So the good news is that as I said, there are mainly two brands for um, inkjet printers nowadays, Epson and Canon. So that actually reduces the scope of your research to find the perfect printer for you. Then when it comes to the models that they're actually offering, um, there's basically one, I would say one major specification that defers the two brands. And then each brand will have about three variants of uh, the, for the printers, which basically is based on the output size that they uh, produce. So finding the right printer for you is actually not that difficult. Um, the ink can also play a big part in it. And then the final ingredient, which to me might actually be um, the second most important one, is the paper. And you see there are an infinite variety of papers out there um, that's a good thing, but also the major drawback is that finding the perfect paper that will help you convey the, your photograph's narrative will be a very challenging task, uh, time-consuming, tedious, and quite expensive. Uh, and that is something that you have to go through. Um, and that's usually why we think about, oh, fine art printing is actually expensive. Well, it all comes down to the paper at the end, um, I would say. So that these are the ingredients. So in the next episode, we're gonna start talking about the column management. And then we'll talk about um, the printer uh, and the paper. And uh, basically, I'm not just gonna talk to you about all these things, we're gonna do it um, together. So I will go shoot and then we'll come home, we'll use the column management workflow that I will have uh, talked to you about. And then at the end, on the final episode, uh, we will pr uh, produce a print and compare um, the original image and the print as well. So this is what I have planned for you guys. Uh, I hope you're as excited as I am. Uh, and there's a lot to talk about, a lot to learn. And it's going to be great fun. So don't forget, there is the blog article um, and uh, the link is in the description. You also have it up there, uh, just above my head or actually somewhere here. And until next time, this is Tom Miggett saying, if you like it, well, capture it. Cheers. <laughs>